it's seven o'clock and I'm the first one up and out the campsite everybody else is still snoozing so I had to be extra quiet <laughs> I've got a long day ahead as I said yesterday with uh, quite a bit more climbing up and down hills so it's going to be a harder day but the views are going to make up for it as the landscape becomes more dramatic and more exposed remnants of the wall appear <sighs> looking forward to it when city smoke has beaten us we'll take flight and we'll go to the bottle green wild waters of any given coast We'll pack away our prison lights Leave them all at home Where the sun bursts over the horizon Away, 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 away Where the sun bursts over the horizon Shall not pass. All right, she's facing me off. She wasn't moving an inch. She wasn't having any of that nonsense. <laughs> the weather is lovely. It's turning into a uh, another beautiful day, and I've got the first little hill to climb up ahead, Craggle Hill. I can see it now. This is the track you take to go and see Lanacost Priory. But I'm going straight up the hill. Halfway up the hill, there's a picnic area. So, uh, perfect. So time for second breakfast and a cup of coffee. Before we have to go up there, well earned though. This is looking back where I've come from and I've been walking along the original course of the wall. There's various different forms of defences and to the north side is also a ditch which you can quite clearly see here. And this shows the great view you can see for miles and miles and miles. Being a national trail it's very well signed. You can see a mixture of old and new ones. The one at the bottom looks particularly new. I've seen hundreds already. In addition to those official signs, there's also uh, signs that locals and farmers have put up themselves, which is quite normal on trails, isn't it? So you hardly even need the map, actually. You could, you could walk it, uh, as well as bumping into quite a lot of people each day. This is a precious remaining fragment of the original wall. That's about three meters tall. And uh, it's probably about two meters wide as well. It's a bit narrower down the bottom end. Here's an illustration of how it might have looked. I just read in the book that um, that uh, section at back at Hare Hill, which was about three metres high, was reconstructed by the Victorians. But uh, that's the highest bit on the entire route, but it's good that they did. Um, so the numbers then, I've got some numbers for you. The, along the route, the wall is between eight and 10 feet thick and was originally built 15 feet high. It took 10 years to build 15,000 men with 2 million tonnes of stone, all of them hand quarried, hand cut and carried or hauled to site. That is amazing. That's just awesome. What an undertaking. So in addition to all the forts along the wall, uh, every mile there was a gateway through the wall to allow passage. They're called mile castles. And in between all the mile castles were two turrets equispaced. This is one of the turrets. And you can see how thick it is. 
they're pretty significant structures this one's about six feet tall this is all the original and it was an observation tower not a gateway through to keep an eye on the invaders Here's another one of the turrets that's spaced every third of a mile. I say third of a mile, but a Roman mile is a bit less than a modern mile. And it's actually uh, 1,000 double paces, so 2,000 steps. Uh, and this is a dead straight piece of road. So I'm gonna count it out to the next one and see if it is 333 double paces, <laughs> just for fun. One, two, three, 78, 79, 80, 281, 282, 283, 284, 284, they're way off the Romans, I'm supposed to be at 333, either that or I've got really long legs compared to your average Roman. <laughs> Remember that was having fun, yes kids, having fun, count your steps quite a few little honesty boxes and honesty sheds like this along the way this must be about the fourth or fifth one I've seen draw our plans to go there to take ourselves away and in the rain our motorways will calculate the days until I bid for freedom And some time when we can say We've seen the sun burst over the horizon Away, 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 away Where the sun busts over gift shop here <laughs> toilets right on we go that's about 12 miles so far and it's lunchtime so um, that's about halfway a little bit more than that so I'm doing okay for time although I know I've got a lot of ascent and descent quite a few ups and downs and bigger ones than I've had this morning so I'm pushing on Adrian's Wall is a World Heritage Site. This is the bridge across the River Irthing. A modern bridge, this one, alongside the remains of the old Roman one. This looks pretty cool. I like a good bridge and that's a very good bridge. It's got a lovely graceful arc to it uh, to account for the, the drop in height from that side of the river down to this side. So the wall descends from that hillside over there. These are the footings for the Roman bridge. And this is the first one for the first span. That's how they say it looked. But it's quite interesting because the river is another 80 or 100 yards in that direction. It's moved over time. They liked to build things straight, the Romans, didn't they? That's looking back down towards the bridge. You can see it's in the middle of the field where, where the river used to be. If you just look to the left corner over there, you can see the new footbridge that I walked across. And the last mile castle was way up, right on top of that rise where the, where the trees are. You can see the wall on the right side and the ditch on the north side. This footpath is called the military road. And then this channel here is called the vallum. Now, the vallum wasn't really a defensive structure. It was more just a marking of territory in the land. Um, but that's quite a good illustration of how it may well have looked. Very good. Bit of excitement now. I've got across the railway line. A slightly different looking mile castle. Very cool, this one and 
they built it on quite a steep slope. You think they'd have just leveled the ground to make building a bit easier, but no, they just did it on the bank. It's the remains of Thirlwall Castle up on the hill, another building which used the Roman stones. Not the rolling stones, the Roman stones. Well, just cross the river down there before Thirlwall Castle. Now it's time to get my climbing boots on because it's up, up, up. I just met another YouTuber, uh, Julia, Adventure Geek. <laughs> Hi, Julia. I <laughs> hope you're watching this and uh, it was nice to meet you. Ah, oh, yeah, Julia does it every year, this Hadrian's Wall path. Great. It's great weather she's got. She's going uh, westbound from Newcastle to Bowness, so the opposite direction. Ooh, up high now, wide ranging views and big skies again. And over there now I can see the high crags, I think it's called Wall Town Crags over there. And I think that's where the wall starts to become really dramatic in the landscape, so just over there. There's another visitor centre here at Wall Town Country Park. And back on the path. Up to the cracks. Bit of a change in the weather. It's gone a bit colder and uh, rather large squally showers coming over. Oof, that's not that bad really, but uh, I'm just hoping that they blow over in the next hour or so because uh, the path descends and then rises up again and uh, the views are even better for later on. Um, so it'd be a real pity if it's all clagged in you know still we'll keep going well it rained for about half an hour but uh, it's stopped now thankfully it's blown over and the sun's come back out so I'm drying off <laughs> and I'm really pleased because I can see the ridge ahead be careful here I can see the ridge ahead and it's completely blown over so uh, I was thinking if it's uh, if it's all clagged in I'm gonna because I'm camping near there, I'm going to dive off before the ascent and go and pitch up. Uh, but if I've got enough energy, then I think I'm going to do the, help, the ascent. Um, so we'll see. The ridge line's getting closer. It's easy to see why they built the wall over the top of that ridge, isn't it? It's like a real natural rampart. I'm directly in the vallum. And just up to the left, you can see the ridge continuing. I've reached Caulfield's Quarry. There's a car park and a toilet here. And some lovely picnic benches. Uh, right at the foot of the climb, which I can see now. It's a pretty nice view, but uh, I've already done 18 and a half miles to this point. So I'm pretty tired now, but I think I've got about three miles left and then that's it. gradient look at this there's lots of little dips on the walk ups and downs they just built straight up that's really steep and it would have been 15 foot tall up there oh i'm getting tired now that's 20 miles and i've just been suckered in the typical fell walking way of thinking that i'd reach the summit plateau and it was going to be a gentle slope to the top and then I saw this <laughs> oh no 
Uh, oh well, I can see the trig point though, so this definitely is the last down and up. Here we are then. Yes, I made it. <laughs> that was a big ask. 20 and a half miles to here with a roller coaster ridge. At least 10 ups and downs. I lost count. Maybe more. Look at the view. It's just magnificent. Perfect conditions. It's not so late either. It's only 6 pm. And I'm looking. Uh, west there and I can actually see I don't know if you can but I can see the sea the sun glinting off it that's about 42 miles can't quite see the sea probably because the angle of the sun but I bet it's not much farther than that wow I never knew you could stand here and almost see coast to coast fantastic well not only is it the high point of this ridge or even today but it's the high point of the entire wall trail so it always feels good to get to the highest point of any trail doesn't it it's great i can see uh, the sill youth hostel down there and also the windshields campsite and uh, this is actually called windshield crags and uh, it's very dramatic what a wonderful place to be it's only about a mile or so to go and it's all downhill with the sun at my back and a beautiful view ahead. So I'll finish for the day, 22 miles. I'm tired. I'm at Windshields campsite. That's the house up there. Uh, flatter pictures are over here. Uh, they've got all the usual things like uh, a shower block, toilet block, that all looks really good. But they've also got a kitchenette and a dining area and charging points and it's warm inside. So I won't have to eat sitting on the floor by the tent, which is a big plus. So it's seven o'clock now and um, I've got quite a bit to do. Uh, getting all my house chores done. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, I'm going to say night night and um, well, that was the end of day two. <laughs> See you tomorrow.